Good morning, everyone. This is Abby Horton, and I'll be leading today's class. And we'll get started in a couple of minutes. We'll just let everyone have time to join in the call. You'll see a question and answer box, and you'll also see a chat box. So if someone could let me know in the chat box if the volume is OK on your end, that would be great. OK, wonderful. Thank you all for letting me know. Well, we'll get started. So um, for the chat, that will be pulled up where I can see, but I also will have question and answer. And so it's at the top of the bar or it may be on the bottom of your screen on the bar. So if you will put your questions um, there, I will take time at the end to answer any of those uh, that you want to share publicly. And then I have my contact information, which will be available um, if you want to reach out to me privately. So we'll just give a couple more minutes and we'll get started. I hope everyone's doing well today. I know it's stressful, stressful time, but we'll have some great practical tips and um, some really en encouraging words to share this morning and hopefully everyone will leave the call feeling much better and more relaxed. So one question was, is this showing video or just audio? And for y'all, this is a webinar. So I actually am not seeing anyone on video and it's actually muted so that you will not accidentally unmute yourself. So that's built into the settings. And so um, we just wanna make sure that you can hear everything okay. And actually, let's see. Um, trying to make sure everything is muted in the background. And um, so that's all taken care of. So you don't have to worry about that. All right. And of course, I just received a phone call as, as I was getting that. So hopefully you can't hear the answering machine in the background. But this is real life. This is what we're doing when we're working from home. Okay, wonderful. Well, it's 10 o'clock or just after, so we're going to go ahead and get started. And I know it's confusing. It says that it's Carolyn Mitvicker, but it's because it's the wellness account that we're using this morning to be able to accommodate everyone. So my name is actually Abby Horton, and I'm one of the wellness educators for Wellbama, and it's a privilege to be with y'all this morning. Uh, like I said, I just got a phone call uh, with a voice message uh, during the call. I've got five children, school age children at home and a, and a dog, so there's no telling what you might hear in the background, but that's part of what we're going to talk about today is just kind of really rolling with the things that are out of our control, and you'll probably hear me say many times today that um, we really have to focus on controlling what we can control because there's so much right now that we don't have control over, and so um, anyway, we'll just get started, and thanks for being here. Um, so again, for those of you who just joined. If you have a question, there is a box that has Q&A, and you can pop that question in the Q&A box, and at the very end of the presentation, I will actually take time to answer those questions. And then um, 
again, for those of you who are on the live call, you will receive your Wellbama credit um, for your class credit. And so the recording of this will be posted on the wellness site and a PDF of this presentation will be made available to you sometime early next week. And so we just want to let you know about those things. Um, for more information on the COVID-19 pandemic and some coping resources, there is a coping resources page on the wellness site uh, that Carolyn McVicker did put together for you. It has some great resources and the link to that is going to be on the last page. Um, the last slide, it'll have that link for you and so you may want to take a screenshot or write that down uh, but there are some excellent resources there for you and um, again this morning we're talking about coping with a crisis and how to cultivate and really empower your mental well-being during this time and so I want you to know that this is going to feel really personal personal and conversational, probably much more so than a normal or typical well-being in my class, but it's because we know this is a stressful time for everyone. This is a class that we put together this week to just offer some great resources for you and to be able to have your wellness uh, class credit uh, for Wellbama. And so we want to really meet your needs. And so please do ask questions if you have any. So today our focus is really encouragement and empowerment and some great resources on how to manage your stress well and um, to be able to just have that conversation this morning. So the context for the recording, you know, those listening in the future is really about the COVID-19 pandemic and kind of where we are in March 2020. And so this information, although within that context, um, it's really a great resource for any time that you're having a stressful transition or a life event. So um, these will be great tools and resources for any time. So with that, we'll get started. Thank you all so much. All right. So again, coping with a mental, um, with a crisis with your mental well-being is just so important. And we know that people need some extra help with that. And so again, my name is Abby Horton. I'm a registered nurse. I teach over in the Capstone College of Nursing. I'm a certified health and life coach and a wellness ambassador and a wellness class educator for Wellbama. And this is my contact information. If you want to send an email or ask a question or have any follow-up questions, you're welcome to contact me at any time and you have that there for you. So today's goal is really again just to discuss how to manage our stress during uncertain times, how to explore the importance of self-care, and to really learn some specific strategies to develop your positive coping strategies. See, so sometimes we have negative coping strategies that are really um, something that we fall back on, but we really want to promote some positive coping strategies for you and um, let this be really practical and tactical so that you have some tools to walk away with. So stress can be defined in many ways, but mental and physical stress can really be a result of a lack of tools to cope with the demands and the pressures that we're feeling, particularly in a situation like the COVID-19 pandemic. And so with this definition and this outlook on stress, we really want to think about stress as being something that we can befriend and something that we can use as a motivator for making some positive changes in our lives. So that's how we're going to talk about stress. So a graphic that I love, I put this together. These are some of my favorite ways to really think about mindset. Um, the first image says, you know, the goal isn't really to get rid of all of the negative thoughts. Sometimes when we talk about stress management or we talk about um, meditation or mindfulness, we have this unrealistic goal that we are going to be able to eliminate all negative thoughts and we're going to be able to eliminate all stress. And that's really not realistic and that's not our goal. Our goal is really just to be able to control what we can control and to be as positive as we can be in a situation that feels a little chaotic and that feels a little bit um, uncertain and, and we have so many unknowns. And so, again, we're just trying to change our response to the stress and to the negativity that we sometimes encounter. And so we don't worry about what we can't control. And then the, the third image is the things I can control. I love this remote control image because it really gives us a way of visually looking at, you know, there are so many things that we try to control. We try to control um, our work situations or our children 
or our partner or spouse. Uh, we try to control what is being done to combat the COVID-19 pandemic. We have all of these thoughts and feelings, but there are only so many things that we can control. And that's usually something that's really about ourselves, our thoughts, our actions, our behaviors. And then that last image is looking at the things we can control plus the things that matter. There are some things that we can control that really aren't important in the grand scheme of things. And so that last image really wants to um, remind you that, you know, even though you can control certain things, maybe they aren't the most important things right now. And so I hope that will be a great way for you to actually think about um, the next few weeks as we kind of see how things unfold. So when we want to talk about mental health, we also want to make sure we give some good resources and know when to seek help. So according to Psychology Today, um, they have some criteria about when you need to seek professional help. And so I put little boxes here. Anytime you see a checkbox like this, this is going to be a way for you once you get the PDF to really do a little self-assessment. Or um, when we talk about coping strategies, there's also boxes where you can check to see which coping strategies really will help and benefit you. And so you can use this as a checklist to say, okay, am I feeling more sad, angry, or overwhelmed, or just not feeling myself? And look at these different things like are you using unhealthy, unhealthy coping mechanisms? Have you lost someone or something important to you recently? Um, a major life event or trauma? Have you stopped doing things you normally do? Some of these things contextually you're going to have experience just because we are doing so much different now, now that we're working from home and we have our children at home probably if you have children. So there are going to be some things that within the context of COVID-19 that you'll say yes to, but you want to just make sure that you're checking in with yourself and making sure that you don't need to reach out to someone um, who can help you professionally, whether that be a, a, a medical doctor, a counselor, um, you know, a therapist, you know, a psychologist, psychiatrist, whatever, um, you know, team member that you have that can help you with your mental health. Just make sure you're checking in regularly. And then how to seek help. So when you decide that you might need some additional resources or some additional help, we have some great resources through our EAP resources um, with the American Behavioral. And so with um, appointments that are available in network in Tuscaloosa, so you can actually see a counselor in Tuscaloosa, uh, they have a wellness support chat that is available 24 seven. They have a great website where you can create a login and they have a phone number you can reach out to them with. Um, and there's also some great records recommendations and resources on the CDC website and so I actually linked those on that page as well. So just want to make sure that you know when and how to seek help. So with stress we talk about stress being good or bad and really stress is it's really neutral. It can be neutral. And so stress is really just that automatic response of your body to any physical or mental demand that's placed on it. And so we have to have levels of stress to be able to operate and to be able to really move through our days and our lives. And so stress really isn't good or bad. It's neutral. It's how we respond to that stress. And so you'll have many hormones that are activated when we have a stress response. And so adrenaline and cortisol are the two that we think of most often. And when we have adrenaline and cortisol on board, those are helpful hormones, but they can be really damaging over the long term. And that's why chronic stress that isn't managed or isn't um, really, you know, reframed as being something that can be positive, that's why stress can be harmful over a long period of time. And so we just want to take note of how well are we dealing with this stress that we're actually encountering. And so we usually think of the flight or fight response. Um, that can be elicited when we have a stress response and we feel overwhelmed, but sometimes we also freeze. And so um, we know that people who um, have had traumas in the past or who feel overwhelmed um, can often freeze in the face of stress. And so that can be really difficult too, because we don't think about that as being one of the options, but it certainly is. And so those are the people who may be procrastinating or who may not be reacting, may not be, you know, grocery shopping or planning ahead, they may just kind of really be in a, a frozen state where they don't really know what to do next. And so um, we have to be concerned about those people as well. 
and we all can have these moments of freezing or fleeing or fighting against the stress. And so those are going to be things that are on a continuum that change sometimes on a daily basis, sometimes on an hourly basis when we're under a lot of stress. And so again, we can have positive or negative effects. We can also have positive or negative coping. And so we're going to talk about some positive coping today. And then moderate levels of stress really are actually necessary, as I said, to move through our daily lives. And so we want to actually be able to harness that stress in a positive way so that we can improve. We can improve our, our performance. We can improve our efficiency. We can improve how well um, we reach out and respond to others in stress. So stress can be very helpful if we use it in that way. So stressors, there are so many stressors for everyone who's on this call. There will be many more stressors than this, or there will be a different combination of stressors. And so this is not all encompassing of the stressors that you may be facing in your life. But I wanted to hit the highlights of the stressors that I thought about as I was putting this presentation together. And I know work-life balance is one of those because we are so structured and we as humans are so habitualized to the the daily routine that we have. And now our days probably look very different than they did a few weeks ago. And they probably look very different day to day, depending on things that are popping up in your family or your work life. And so that can be really stressful because as humans, we really like to know what to anticipate. And when we can't anticipate something, it's hard for us to plan. And then that creates this cycle of anxiety and worry and uncertainty that we sometimes can just let paralyze us or freeze us in that stress response. We have family responsibilities, which are probably really weighing heavily on many of you. I understand that as a mom of five. I really have had increased responsibilities this week. Um, so it can be a challenge. Then we have social distancing, which is difficult for a lot of people. Um, you know, it's not just the extroverts. Many people who identify as introverts um, are, are definitely feeling that uh, strain and difficulty because we're in such close contact with others. There's not really a break for anyone. People who do enjoy going out and having social contact aren't able to do that. And so it's a strain on everyone, regardless of your personality or your preference. Um, so even those of us who are homebodies are struggling a little bit this week. Um, then we have the business and school closures, which could be impacting you or a spouse um, or a partner. And so that's difficult. Of course, everyone's concerned about financial concerns, childcare and schooling. Maybe you're a caregiver or maybe you're kind of being distanced from family because of their high risk, um, you know, situation or age. And so I know that's true for me and for my parents. Um, maintaining relationships can be difficult because you are separated. You can have health concerns. Maybe you have an autoimmune or chronic illness that you're concerned about. Maybe you're simply just concerned about um, contracting the COVID um, you know, virus. And so there's lots of things that you could be concerned about with health and illness. And then your environment and living situation, you can just grow tired of being in the same environment every day while you're trying to stay at home. And so you can become really, you know, kind of bogged down with that situation. So that can be difficult, especially if you're in close quarters or you don't have access to be able to go outside safely. Um, so that can be difficult. And then of course, just the uncertainty of all of it. And I'm sure we all can identify with the uncertainty aspect. We just would like to know when this is going to be over and that there's going to be a good outcome for our loved ones. And so those are all stressors that can play a role. And there may be many more that I haven't mentioned, um, but just wanted to touch on those. And so take a moment to just think about what are your stressors and kind of what are the two or three big things that are weighing heavily on you this morning. And um, we're going to we're gonna talk about that and kind of what we can do to alleviate some of that stress. So for triggers, everyone's going to have an individual trigger. So we have all of those stressors um, that we listed and maybe many more for you that are unique to your situation. But for each of those, we're going to have different triggers. So for me, a trigger might be that the dog is barking at the door constantly. Um, for you, the trigger might be that, you know, your child or your partner, you know, spilled their orange juice this morning at breakfast. You know, everyone's going to have that thing that, 
you know, they can't then handle the next situation. And it's not about the spilled orange juice or the dog barking at the door, but it's about you're just stressed. And that's the last thing that really triggered that stress and anxiety in you. So if you think about some triggers for you, you probably already know them. They're the things that you text your spouse or partner or your best friend and say, this is really kind of making me bananas today. This is, this is bothering me. That's a trigger. And so we don't call it that, um, but that's your trigger. And so be mindful of those. If you know that's an, an issue for you, then maybe you can try to limit your exposure to those triggers or avoid them altogether, which is probably unlikely right now. Um, but you can sort of think about self-care strategies for how to manage that. So if you know that you've got a conference call like we have this morning, you know, and you're, you're concerned about the dog barking, maybe it's that you could let them outside in the backyard if you have that option. Maybe it's that you could put them in their kennel if you use a kennel. You know, there are different things that you can think about that will help alleviate some of that stress and anxiety and being really proactive about that and that was just a simple example um, that maybe there's something else that you could really apply that to and then decide how you're going to respond so maybe the dog barks anyway um, maybe the juice gets spilled anyway even though you've tried all of these things um, but then decide how you're going to respond um, because it takes more energy really to get upset and to um, you know kind of overreact than it does to just address the issue which is cleaning up the spill or giving the the dog some attention or a treat or, you know, feeding, feeding the dog or something like that. You know, it takes more energy to get upset because then you are, you're upset and then you also then still have to deal with the situation at hand. So just think about that as you're moving through your days and seeing where you can limit those triggers and really try to dampen the, the response that you have to those. So when you manage stress, you can think about um, so many benefits that you can have, you know, physical and emotional benefits to you, but also to the people who are around you, whether those are coworkers when we're back in the office working together, and, or maybe it's your family or your loved ones, um, your friends, but if you're also going to have a benefit for yourself. And so you're going to improve your energy, your stamina, you're going to improve your attitude. Hopefully you'll be, um, you know, happier, more hopeful, um, more positive. You'll just have a better outlook on life. And then you also can actually improve your focus and your ability to learn and achieve when you manage your stress well. Because when we're stressed, our body is really attending to that stress and it's not actually able to operate 100%. We're really kind of making more work for ourselves when we're stressed out and not managing it well. So creating this awareness is what this, this presentation and talk is really all about. We want to start challenging negative beliefs that we have because our thoughts really do create our feelings and our actions and that's going to create the life that we're leading and, and building for ourselves. And so when you have a negative thought, really start to challenge that. Um, you know, is this truly the worst day ever? It may feel like it in the moment, but you have to wonder, you know, have you had worse days? Are there worse days that you could think of? So then maybe it isn't the worst day ever. You're just frustrated in the moment. And it's easy to say that. I say that sometimes too. It's just really easy to, to say that you're having the worst day. And maybe it's not that the whole day was bad. Maybe it was just 15 minutes that was bad because you, you know, had a situation or you got a stressful email or something like that. Um, so really think about reframing those negative thoughts. Seek that medical care when you need it because we, we know that mental health is something that we really have to take care of. And your mental health will fluctuate just like your physical health will. And so you have to really think about how you're going to plan ahead for that. Really pursue that positive mindset. Develop a care plan. Develop one that includes your mind and your body. And so how are you going to take care of yourself well in the face of challenges like this COVID-19 pandemic? And then practice good self-care. And self-care doesn't have to be overly indulgent. It doesn't have to be selfish. It can just mean that you're carving out time and you're being really intentional about how you spend your time and how you uh, choose to take care of yourself. So that's important. 
And then manage your stress. Um, manage your stress looks like the coping strategies we're about to talk about coming up in the next few slides. But think about how stress can be helpful to you, as I mentioned earlier. And then prioritization is really important. Sometimes we think we have to do everything and that we have to do everything now and that we have to do everything well. And what we really want to focus on is actually thinking about prioritizing what's most important. And so an acronym that people People use often, especially in counseling or mental health practices, is the acronym WIN. And so WIN, what does it take to win in this situation or what does it take to be a winner? And WIN, if you spell it out and use it as an acronym, is what's important now. And so maybe what's important right now is that you just, you know, shut off the notifications on your social media and you put your phone on do not disturb for a few minutes and you take some time out to just write a list of things that are you know on your mind weighing heavily on you and maybe take that 15 minute time out for yourself and prioritize those tasks that may be what you need to do this morning to really kind of feel like you're moving forward and that you're not stuck um, and then be flexible because things are going to have to adapt and change as we get new information and as our situations um, you know change or adapt as well and so we just have to remember to be flexible an acronym that's being used um, in the medical community right now, particularly in mental health, is FACE COVID. And so when you look at this acronym, it talks about focusing on what you can control. So much of this is what we've already touched on. Acknowledge your thoughts and feelings. So it's important to know how you feel and how you think about things and, and to let you really feel those feelings because they're valid. That's, that's how you're trying to cope um, with the unknowns and uncertainty. And then come back into your body. Sometimes we are so attached to our devices, our computers, our phones. Um, maybe we're so invested in others that we're not really thinking about how we feel. If you've ever gone through a stressful day, um, you get home from work or, you know, something, it's a stressful event you get home from and you realize how much your feet hurt or your legs hurt or your back hurts and you just feel drained and tired when you walk in the door and you put your things down. It's because we're really not aware. We were probably tired all day. We were probably hurting earlier in the day, but we weren't enough aware of our body for us to actually recognize that. But once we got home to our safe spot, um, put our things down, we were realizing, oh, I was stressed today. Oh, now I do have a headache. Oh, I do see that I have those aches and pains. And so be present in your body. And that requires a lot of intentionality. Um, engage in what you're doing. So sometimes we can be thinking about all the things that we have to do, maybe what you have to do this afternoon or what you need to get at the grocery store when you're able to make a run to the grocery um, and we're not present so really engage where you are and do what you're doing with a mindful approach and that's less exhausting mentally too because when we don't give our brains and our minds rest we're constantly using up energy stores even calorie intake gets used by our brains because we're trying to process so much information um, be committed to take action so be mindful and aware of what's going on you know certainly be you know attending to what the news is telling us and what we're seeing um, communicated to us um, you know through our emails and on the newscasts but don't be um, you know bogged down by it maybe you need to take a news break and just check in a few times a day versus constantly refreshing the news feed and then be committed to take positive action whenever it's needed um, open up about your feelings really tune into the values that you have you know what's important to you um, make sure that what you're valuing is actually how you're spending your time and um, identify resources that could be helpful to you or to others and then of course disinfect hand wash and distance yourself as we've been asked to do and those are things that can really empower you to feel like in the face of uncertainty and unknowns you're, you have a, a blueprint just on this slide of how you can actually approach um, this COVID situation. And then cultivate calm. You know, so many times people, especially if you're in a position of, of authority or leadership, um, 
either in the home or at work, people are going to look to you for how you respond and for how you're acting. And so um, if you have children, uh, you know, those children are going to remember how you reacted. They probably may or may not remember the details of every day, but they'll remember how we respond and how we model how we should act and, um, and approach a stressful situation. Um, and so cultivate that sense of calm and that will pour out into your your, your circle um, of influence, whether that's, you know, your children or your coworkers, and um, even in writing emails or taking phone calls, you know, you can feel someone's calmness or you can feel that kind of frenetic energy that people have when they're stressed out. And so if we approach things with just a calm nature, acknowledging our feelings, realizing it's okay to feel anxious, we all feel anxious. Um, you know, some people may just show that anxiousness you know, differently. And so that's okay. Um, you know, again, stay informed, but take breaks from the news, take breaks from social media. It can get overwhelming. Um, offset the stress with some calming activities. Remain that, you know, that hopeful, optimistic person that you probably are. And then plan and prepare for the unexpected so that you do feel empowered. So this might look like grocery shopping or meal planning. This might look like doing a house project that you've been putting off. Um, this might mean that you, you know, have some medical supplies or medications on hand if you need medications regularly. And so just create a sense of calm so that you can have a space that it's really a retreat and sanctuary for you. Um, you know, having a dedicated workspace that you set up for yourself and doing little things in your space, in your home to make it feel calm will be really helpful as we spend some really good quality time um, in our living spaces um, over the next couple of weeks. And then maintain normalcy. That's so important to do when we're under stress. And this is a link, the tips to maintain normalcy, a link to a video um, that's on YouTube. And the screenshot that you see over here, the COVID-19 tips to help maintain normalcy is the actual thumbnail of the video. And you'll have access to this within the PDF. But the main points that they uh, really relay is to control what you can control, take care of your mental and physical needs, which we're going to to talk about that and then practice mindfulness and focus on your breathing and so we've mentioned several of these things across the slides and as we get toward the end of the presentation we're going to see what that looks like practically and then stay connected you know with social distancing that doesn't mean that we're isolated and um, we're only isolated if we choose to be because thankfully we have so much great technology that lets us stay connected and so um, we can be practicing social distancing while staying connected so it might mean facetiming with friends and family i really don't facetime very much but i have facetimed more this week than i ever have in the history of owning a smartphone and that has been really helpful for me and for my family um, even, you know, just connecting with neighbors and friends that way, uh, call or text to check in. So I love to send little, um, you know, memes or images to friends. So I've created a few. And so occasionally, you know, once or twice a week, I'll, you know, think of a new friend group that I can text and check in on them, um, mail a card or a letter to a loved one. So earlier this week, uh, my kids and I took time to send digital postcards to our grandparents. So um, we have grandparents here in Alabama and we have grandparents over in Mississippi. And so as a way to stay connected because their visit got canceled, um, our Mississippi grandparents got a postcard this week. And so that may be a great teaching moment, but also a way to stay connected for children or even just for yourself. And then social media, of course, um, use that to keep in touch. It's hard to look at our news feeds. Um, without seeing a lot of images and, and articles and things being shared about the COVID-19 pandemic, but we also can really cultivate our news feed. So maybe you need to snooze some people. Maybe you need to go and look for some positive accounts to follow. Uh, I certainly have done that. And so um, that may be a time where you can find some new folks to follow and really cultivate that. Uh, host a virtual dinner party or play date. So, several friends have posted that they've done this. And um, they've used, um, you know, something like Zoom or Google Hangout uh, to host a virtual dinner party or play date for their friends and family. Uh, check on your neighbors. You can do that in a really responsible way, um, you know, walking the neighborhood or sending a message or giving a call. And so those are all important things to do to stay connected. 
And so for some of us, we need permission to feel like we can carve out this time or take time for ourselves. I'm definitely someone who likes to have permission from someone else. <laughs> you know, we're kind of conditioned for that. And so um, this is your permission slip to really put yourself first, to put your health first, and certainly to put your mental health first. So it's okay to say no. Um, if you're someone who says no a lot, maybe you need to say yes. If you're someone who says yes all the time, maybe you need to say no some. Um, it's okay to ask for help. Many of you may be the people who are actually the first to volunteer. I would say that's probably true for many of you. And so maybe it's time for you to ask for help. And then um, carve out that time for the good things, the things that feel good, the things that are really life-giving. So now we're kind of transitioning into the practical. So coping strategies, um, you know, hit pause, rest and reset often. Um, this is something that you're going to have to do maybe on a daily basis. And so, um, again, like I said, when you kind of put your phone on do not disturb and you take some time out to just write a list of things that are really weighing on you, that, that could be a way to hit pause and to rest and reset. Set realistic expectations. You're probably not going to get everything accomplished that you have on your list for a day. And that's okay. But when we're prioritizing what we're doing, then um, it's okay when same thing need to get moved to the next day. Um, make tasks manageable, avoid procrastination, which is really easy to do when you don't have that external accountability like you have in a workplace. Um, it can be really easy, especially when you have lots of other, um, you know, challenges and things that are going on, and that can be really difficult. And um, I'm seeing that my screen has changed. Are y'all still able to hear me and see me? Can y'all let me know in the chat? Yes, okay, perfect. Maybe just a little tech issue. <laughs> All right, perfect, I see it again now too, thank you. Um, maybe you need to, um, you know, set some healthy boundaries. Maybe you have been, you know, really giving a lot and maybe you need to really set boundaries for yourself and for your family. So that might look like um, that you can't, you know, pick up groceries for someone today, but maybe you could do it tomorrow. And so that always makes me feel good when I have to say no about something, is that I always follow it up with, you know, I can't do that today, but here's what I can do. And that may be helpful for you when you actually need to say no. And that could be a healthy boundary. Don't compromise your values or beliefs, um, you know, even if it's to be helpful. You know, really, if your priority right now is to take care of your family, um, you know, or to work on this project, then really make sure that you aren't compromising on those values or beliefs because that's going to add some mental stress to you. Schedule that me time. Listen to music. Um, I'm going to share my favorite station to listen to on Spotify at the end. We're listening to a lot of music in this house lately. <laughs> Uh, it's a great tool for distraction and it really calms the brain. There's some, there's some science there about that. Um, get outside in nature. Just because we need to be at home and distancing ourselves doesn't mean that we can't get out in our yards if we can do it safely. Um, doesn't mean that we can't get out and take a walk in our neighborhood if we can social distance. And so just make sure that Staying at home doesn't mean staying inside 24-7. Um, you can get some, you know, some nature time, and that's helpful, especially when we're dealing with stress. Find a hobby. Maybe it's a hobby that you can do from home. It doesn't have to be something expensive or something where you have to go somewhere or even where you have to have supplies. There are lots of things that you can do as a hobby at home without having to spend money or go somewhere. Um, you might want to take a warm shower or bath if that's relaxing to you. Make time for what sparks joy. You know, I often ask people when I teach classes, when is the last time you did something that sparked joy? And they'll have to think, well, I'm not sure what sparks joy. If you can't immediately list a couple of things that spark joy for you, then that means you do need to hit pause and reset. Um, when's the last time you did something for the first time? That's an important question because so many times we get in a rut of just doing the same thing every day, every week. Every Monday looks kind of like last Monday. Every Tuesday looks kind of like last Tuesday. Um, so do some new things, once, especially we are able to get out and be social and go back to the workplace. Place, do some new things 
every once in a while. That really helps relieve stress and builds excitement into your life. Clear the clutter. Many of you may be looking at piles and stacks of things. Um, we definitely have, you know, piles of clutter in our home that I'm trying to work on. Um, those will bother you more now that you're at home. And so maybe clearing the clutter really will help. You know, our environments are a reflection of how we are dealing with things. And so when we procrastinate and we have piles or we have a lot of laundry, um, you know, piling up, that can really indicate our, our overall mental well-being and just our time management, you know, where we're spending our time. Um, someone said, I love this list. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. I'm glad it's helpful. Um, ask for help. You have that permission. And then coping strategies. You know, we probably are not laying in a hammock with our feet up this week, and that's okay. I'm seeing a lot of that on my social media feeds, and, and you have that little kind of, you know, heart flutter where you think, I wish I had that kind of time, or I wish that was, you know, my reality. And, you know, we're all going to have those moments of comparison, but comparison really is the thief of our joy. And so even though we may not be able to have, you know, a, a staycation or a break that looks like our neighbor or our best friend, try to find the joy and the fun in what you're able to do. Because, um, you know, I definitely am not going to be in a hammock with my feet up this week. And that's okay, um, because I'm doing other things that are really life-giving and that really bring me joy in a different way. But it's, it's so easy when we're scrolling through Facebook or Instagram or whatever social media you use, it's so easy to think, oh, I wish that was my reality. And they may be feeling that way too about something else. So um, just remember that we only post our highlight reels and we're not seeing the whole picture. So don't get discouraged. Create rhythms and routines. This is so important in any time of your life. Um, I have five children. I have two sets of twins. And so they're ages seven to 12. And um, it, they can be a lot to manage logistically, just from, you know, mouths to feed or laundry to wash. And so creating rhythms and routines is so important to stay on track. And those rhythms and routines are going to change probably daily, weekly. And it'll, they'll be different when you go back to work, um, you know, in, in an office setting. But those will really sustain you while you have some uncertainty and that will help any children that you have too and uh, we really like to know what to expect so if they know that they're going to get up and eat breakfast just like they normally would maybe it's a half an hour later or an hour later now that you don't have to get up and be somewhere in the morning um, that will be helpful so they know okay my, my mom's day or my dad's day may change but I know I'm having breakfast at this time I know I'm having lunch at this time and I know that they're going to be done with work at this time and that will create some great structure for y'all. Uh, set aside that time to reflect and plan. We don't do that nearly enough. Use positive affirmations. A quick Google search will yield so many results of this and I'll share some of my favorites at the end. Make time for that rest and relaxation. You know, have a stopping point. You know, have a starting and an ending point in your day so that you can know, okay, now it, now it's family time. Now it's me time. And so really, you know, kind of clock out. I'm a nurse and so I tell my kids all the time, okay, Mama's clocking out. Now it's your time. Or Mama's clocking out. Now it's bedtime. We, we've got to go to bed for the night. And so I use that as a fun way to remind them that we're shifting gears. Um, so you can use that as well. That will really help you. Um, meditate. Just three to five minutes will be really helpful to you. Um, and I'll talk about meditation a little bit more later. But journal, use free writing. That can be kind of like a brain download develop gratitude. Maybe you want to jot down two or three things you're grateful for. Maybe you want to do that in the morning. Maybe you want to do that in the evening before bed, but just remind yourself to be grateful and try to think of new things. So don't just list your family every day, but maybe you say, you know, I really appreciate my, my spouse or my partner because they made a cup of coffee for me this morning. So be really specific about that. Engage and be present. Reframe those negative thoughts like we've been saying. Con connect with that friend or family member. Unplug. Unplug all of your devices <laughs> and give yourself a break. Stretch. Stretching is really important. Um, taking a walk is important. Get your body moving get your um, your mind kind of on something else and um, can be really a great distraction 
So anytime people are struggling, and I teach many wellness classes uh, for Wellbama, I always try to include the wellness basics. So when you feel kind of like your world is crumbling and you just need a reset, these are the five things that I suggest and that I have personally done to reset. And um, I call them five to thrive. And so take care of yourself during stressful times. And that means your body too. So many times we can be anxious because we are actually not sleeping enough or we're dehydrated. So if you're sleep deprived or you're dehydrated, you can have a physiological anxiety from those things. And we can think that it's purely mental, um, a mental anxiety, but sometimes it's because we aren't meeting our physical needs. So sleeping well, staying hydrated, striving for a healthy plate, moving your body every day, and meditation. Those are the five to thrive. And so the next five slides, I'm going to go through what those look like. And I'm going to give you five tips for each. So these are going to be 25 things that you can do to improve your overall wellness. And when I say 25 things, some of y'all are excited and you're making a list and you're, you're going to do these five things for these five categories. And, and that's going to be really helpful to you. And some people are going to think, oh, wow, that's really stressful. And I can't do that. And for most people, it is really stressful and you can't do that. So pick one or two things to make improvements or adjustments. And then once you have a handle on those, then add in more. Okay. So our philosophy is really add in the good stuff and it's going to crowd the not so good stuff out. Okay. So don't get overwhelmed. So with sleep, sleep is fundamental to health. So you want to make sure that you're having good quality sleep and quantity, numbers of hours. We often talk about get seven to eight hours of sleep and you're good to go. But the quality of your sleep actually matters too. So if you're waking up in the morning after sleeping six or seven or eight hours a night and you actually feel worse in the morning than you did when you went to bed, there may be something going on that you need to think about you know, contacting your doctor or a sleep specialist after this crisis is over um, because you may be having some difficulty. Um, you know, maybe you have sleep apnea, maybe you're having restless leg syndrome, maybe there's something physiological going on, but the quality of sleep matters as much or more than the quantity. Be in bed by 10. So at 9 p.m., you really want to shut things down you don't want to watch a lot of TV. You don't want to be on devices with blue light. Um, you want to use 9 to 10 to really kind of wind down and then be in bed by 10 because our bodies are designed to heal themselves between 10 and 12 p.m. So if you're not sleeping in that 10 p.m. to 12, you know, midnight time frame, then you're really not getting that good restorative sleep. Even if you get seven or eight hours of sleep, you're still not getting that restorative sleep. And so it's so easy with not having to get up in the morning to go to work or to get kids to school to stay up at late at night and then sleep a little bit extra in the morning. But that's actually going to make you feel a little bit worse. Um, and then make sure that your room is, is the way that you like it. Cooler and darker is better. So hydrate, so many times we get dehydrated and we don't realize that we think we're hungry when really we're thirsty. And so water's your friend. So make sure you set a goal, make sure you set reminders on your phone, or maybe you have, um, you know, something like an Alexa Echo Dot to remind you um, to actually drink water every hour. Usually the general rule now is instead of eight eight you know, ounce cups of water, so that's six, 64 ounces. Instead of that, we usually say now to drink about half of your body weight in ounces per day. And so, um, you know, if you weigh 200 pounds, then that would be 100 ounces of water. And that probably is going to be a little bit too much for you. Um, so just use your best judgment and really tune into your body to see where you actually get a good amount of water. And so it's probably more than 64 ounces, but it's probably a little less than 100 um, for most people. So you don't want to overhydrate. That can be harmful, but you definitely want to get in at least that 64 ounces a day. And then track your progress. There's lots of apps. Maybe you use a calendar or a planner. Um, habit stack is so important in the habit uh, change class that I teach, definitely I talk about habit stacking. So maybe every time you sit down at your computer, maybe every time you, um, you know, watch a TV show and there's a commercial break, 
take a sip of your water and um, keep doing that so that every time you do one thing, then you know, okay, now it's time to drink water. So for me, every time I get coffee, um, I'm drinking more coffee than I usually would this week. I go and refill my water bottle. And so that's a habit stack that I do. So I can enjoy my cup of coffee without feeling guilty because I know then I'm going to follow it up with another bottle of water. And then of course, always have your water with you. And then a bonus tip. So this is six tips for hydration. Make it fun to drink water. I don't always enjoy um, kind of the plain taste of water. And so you can make it more fun with using like Mio drops or maybe herbs or um, some fruit, that would be really helpful. So I struggle with this. And so this is something that I had to do to make it fun because I, I'm not naturally inclined to just drink water all day. So nourish, eat for health. So eat a balanced meal, eat the rainbow. We talk about eating green foods a lot and we think that that equates to health, but we don't think about all of the other fruits and vegetables that we need. And so make sure that your plate is really colorful. We tend to eat white and green food and not really, you know, orange and purple and um, the reds. And so there's lots of information on the web about what each of those food groups and colors kind of mean for you in terms of nutrients. But the simple thing is just to eat the rainbow and then you'll be okay. Um, you know, provided that you're getting all of the good protein and things that you need. Um, track your meals and, and your snacks. So certainly now that we're at home and we have easy access to our fridge and our pantries, that can be really difficult um, to stay away. And so try to remember, you know, that you don't have to eat. You're, you're not eating like that probably at work. So you don't have to do that at home. Usually we do it as a distraction or just because we're bored. Um, and then again, make one simple change at a time. And then move your body. Um, pick something that you enjoy. Um, Carolyn McVicker shared that yoga down dog down here in this bottom corner is actually offering some free resources to do um, workouts at home. And there are so many that I'm seeing on my news feeds. You know, YMCA's are offering things. Bar classes are offering um, some free things. And so just plug in to something that will help you um, with your exercise and moving, but if it's just turning on music and dancing in your kitchen, or if it's just walking the neighborhood or stretching in the morning, as long as you're doing something every day to move intentionally, you know, at least 30 minutes where you're, you know, getting a little bit of a, you know, a heart workout, you're getting your, you know, your body moving. That's really the goal right now. Um, so don't think that you have to do, you know, what you were doing before or try to replicate something that you were doing at a gym or maybe you haven't been exercising now would be a great time to get in the habit of walking uh, walking has helped me with my weight loss goals and health goals more than a lot of the other things that i would have expected to to really get myself moving and, and feeling better so walking's great and then meditation, be mindful. Um, it's so easy to get caught up in what everyone else is doing and what everyone's saying and the stress of everything. Um, but having some dedicated quiet time, especially in the morning and at night, those are really big transitions for us. And then when you go back to working on campus, when you, um, you know, are leaving for the workday, having some quiet time on your drive home, really helping your body to shift, your brain to shift to the next thing is important. Uh, meditation even at three to five minutes is helpful and I'm going to share my favorite app for that repeating those positive affirmations like I've said so many times throughout this presentation being present being mindful of distractions we sometimes make things um, uh, you know kind of a distraction in itself so we can sometimes you know create you know, stress because we want to be distracted from something else. Um, so if we're getting bogged down and, you know, maybe something that's being posted on social media or maybe something a neighbor said or did, try to ask yourself, are you using that as a distraction because you're really worried or anxious about something else? And a lot of times you'll see that you probably are just using that stressor as a distraction. And I know I certainly do that as well. So, and um, I'm seeing a question about um, sharing the resources. Y'all are welcome to share the resources. Um, any resources that I share with you, you're welcome to share them. 
um, with any of, of your friends and family. If you think that they would like the apps I've recommended or you, you know, want to share some of the information you're, you've learned, you're welcome to. Um, this is all really hard earned knowledge that I've had from going through a lots of stressful events, you know, as a nurse and a mom and just as a human. And so um, what I love about teaching is really just getting to share um, my experiences and hopefully it helping someone without them having to go through those situations themselves. So yes, please feel free to share. Um, reminders, you know, it can be so easy to give in to, you know, self-soothing or self-medicating with food or um, with alcohol or other things. And so just remember to drink responsibly and in moderation. And I list here, you know, what the, you know, moderate guidelines are. And of course, um, you know, everything kind of, you know, is based on, um, you know, gender when it looks at guidelines. But, you know, you may know that your, your moderate you know, consumption is different than this, but this is just what the medical community agrees upon. So I've listed it here for you. Um, try to avoid excess caffeine. I really have to watch my coffee intake during times of stress because it is my go-to. Um, that is something I've always done. And so I have to really step away from the coffee maker. Um, avoid energy drinks. I really worry about that because, you know, it, those can be so damaging um, from just, you know, a physical health standpoint, you know, and if you need an energy drink, then you probably need rest more than an energy drink. Um, but they're not healthy for you, especially your cardiovascular health. So please don't do that. Um, and then avoid the tobacco use, smoking, vaping, etc. Especially with this COVID-19 being all about respiratory. Um, you know, it's very difficult to stop any of the habits, whether it's coffee for you or whether it's um, alcohol consumption or whether it's vaping or smoking. Um, there's absolutely no judgment in me saying this whatsoever because we all have that thing that's hard for us to, to cut back on or to stop. Um, but yet be really mindful of um, anything respiratory right now because that's going to be um, difficult for you, um, you know, with combating, you know, respiratory infections and viral things. So just be mindful of this. Sugar content too. Sugar content, really, if you can um, decrease that, that's really helpful for your overall health too because, um, you know, it really just feeds a lot of the viruses and infections and things that we can have in the body. And then, of course, avoiding other harmful substances. So many times, you know, people, you know, really to self-soothe and self-medicate, we turn to these things in moments of crisis and stress. And so that can be really hard. And um, we all deal with something like that. So no judgment, just be mindful and aware. So finding balance looks different for everyone, and I want that to really be the message that you hear. What works for me is not going to work for you, is not going to work, you know, for your best friend or your neighbor or even someone else on this Zoom call, you know, so you really have to think about what's helpful for you and to know that what maybe I choose to do today to help with my stress, that may not help me tomorrow. That may not be the thing that's going to get me through tomorrow in a really healthy way and that's okay. So we just have to learn to adapt and to adjust um, and to know that we have to change based on our needs in the moment. And so finding balance looks different. These are rocks that I love to share in my presentations. They're called Karens and they are stacked stones that are balanced. And so you see each of these um, three sets of images, three sets of rocks, and they're all balanced, but they're balanced differently. I'm a really visual person. I love um, you know, art and, and photography and images like this. And so every PowerPoint presentation, I try to pull in images and, and not just ones that look relaxing, but that have that, you know, symbolic meaning. And so I wanted to take time to explain that. It's a great reminder that we're all different and that we all have to do what's best for ourselves. So celebrate your wins. This is something that is really important to me. Um, you know, when we go through stressors and when we think about, you know, just even maybe showering and putting on clothes that are not pajamas or athleisure wear, that might be a small win for you. And I would encourage that. Next week, we're going to offer a couple of classes about how to work from home productively and then another class about how to take care of your children while you're working. Um, and that's a tip I'm going to share is that, you know, get up and shower, set your alarm. Maybe it's an hour later than you usually get up, but, you know, set your alarm, get dressed for the day, shower. You know, maybe you don't 
don't do your full hair and makeup, or maybe you don't put on a suit or, you know, whatever it is, maybe you don't do it to that full extent, but you'll feel better if you're not in your pajamas. I, I promise you, <laughs> you will feel better. Um, so just celebrate those wins and it may look totally different than a, a normal win would look for you or a typical win would look. Um, and, and maybe you can't go out to dinner like we would normally do, or maybe you can't, you know, order your full Amazon order, but you can celebrate and acknowledge when you do something productive and do something for yourself. Um, that's important because you want to celebrate. So this toolkit, I'm going to go through it really quickly because it's just resources that we've already touched on, but this is the toolkit that I love to share because I want you to always walk away with something practical. Um, we talk about problems so much, but it's so refreshing when we talk about solutions. Um, so this is a TED Talk on mindset. It's Carol DeWick. And um, she does a lot of work on mindset. She has many books and podcasts and videos. If you Google her name, um, you will see all of her work. But this is one on mindset. And then this is a TED Talk on stress, Kelly McConnell. And she talks about how to make stress your friend. And these are short TED Talks, uh, really entertaining. I think you'll enjoy them. I show them to my students often. And um, they always get really positive feedback. And then this is a video on breathing. It's a breathing technique because so many times we walk through life in such a hurry that we don't actually stop to do a lot of deep breathing. And that can be difficult um, for us during times of stress because we talk really fast and we breathe really fast. And so it's really going to be hard to, um, you know, take time to de-stress if we're kind of hyperventilating ourselves. So this is a great one and I have an app to share to you. Someone said that they notice they're more productive when they put their shoes on. That's such a great technique. Um, if you follow the fly lady, the fly lady is an organizational cleaning um, kind of guru and expert and she recommends putting your shoes on. I actually notice that I'm more productive when I put my watch on. So I put my shoes on pretty frequently to walk through the house even when I'm off, but I only put my watch on when I'm going to work. And because as a nurse, you know, knowing what time it is is so important. And so when I put my watch on, oddly enough, that's when I'm so productive. So I have my watch on today. <laughs> but yes, I love that tip. And I do have my shoes on too. <laughs> and then Mel Robbins, I love her work. She does a lot with mental health. She and Brene Brown are two great resources if you want to really dive deep into mental well-being. Um, but Mel Robbins' technique is the 54321. And it's where she, during a bout with depression, decided that she was going to pretend to kind of be a rocket and launch herself out of bed. And so she would get up in the morning, she was really depressed, she had lost her job, she was an attorney, and her life was kind of kind of topsy-turvy, and so she wasn't getting up in the morning, and she said, okay, I'm just going to do five, four, three, two, one, and then at one, I'm going to pretend like I'm a rocket ship, and I'm just going to get out of the bed, and she does that now for every part of her life, and um, she's written a book called The Five Second Rule, and she's a motivational speaker now, so it really can change your life if you start to implement some of these techniques, and I really like her work. Uh, Brene Brown is another favorite. She she does a lot of work. She's a social work professor, and you probably know her, but she's got so much great information out there for free and books and things you can purchase. Um, when life returns to more of a normal, typical, you know, routine, and I say normal in air quotes because normal is relative, um, I really like this technique. A good friend and a counselor, Julia Madrid, shared this with me several years ago, and it's called On the Horizon, and so it's a 2-2-2 two, two, two rule. So every two weeks go out for the evening, every two months go out for the weekend, and every two years go out for a week. Um, and it's this principle of planning something to look forward to. Um, so I would say my modification would be to plan something that you look forward to once a quarter. Say three to four times a year, plan something that is just for you, maybe your, your spouse, your partner, your kids, whatever your family looks like, um, but have something on the horizon to look forward to. Um, so you might want to think about when COVID-19 is over, <laughs> what are we going to do? And I know for me, I'm going to go to my favorite restaurant and have dinner with my husband. That's going to be what is on my horizon. 
Okay, so last few slides, and we'll finish up. I know we're almost at time. Um, these are some more resources, the 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 technique. This is a grounding meditation, and it walks you through. You just look around your space and see five things you can see, four things you can touch, etc. And that's a great way to ground yourself, especially if you're having anxiety, um, because so many times we just kind of disassociate and zone out and so that's a great way to ground yourself totally stress-free down in the bottom corner over here is um, the Spotify station that I love to listen to so meal times can be a little chaotic with seven of us so we play totally stress-free on the echo dot and that helps people you know calm down and remember okay it's time to transition and um, this is a great app for meditation it's called stop brink breathe and think and it's a great one it's free all of these are free uh, I tried to pick things that were really you know functional um, be focused this is an app it's called a tomato timer or the Pomodoro technique it's Italian it's an, an Italian word for you know kind of an Americanized concept of using this app to help you take intentional breaks so you usually work for about 45 minutes and take a 15 minute break get up stand up walk around go to the restroom get some water so I use this when I really want to be focused you work in those hour blocks for four hours and then once you go to four hours you take an extended break and so that might be a lunch break or a coffee break or something breathe relax is one that helps you with your breathing technique so that's a great one and um, color fly this is one that's really kind of more fun it is a free app that you can get and you can actually color on your phone so if you're a recovering perfectionist like I am you can color and if you make a mistake or you want to change the color you can and it's just an app that you use on your iPhone um, so last night I colored um, Van Gogh's sunflowers one of my favorite artists and paintings uh, and I did that just as a way to wind down and, and relax last night. Um, and then motivation. This is an app here. And if you don't have someone that really pours into you and texts you encouraging messages and things, it's a way for you to actually set your, um, you know, reminders in your app. And it will send you however often you want throughout the day a little motivation or quote. And you can choose the backgrounds and all of these are free apps and I just think that's a great way to you know to pour into yourself and I'm gonna come back to that as my last you know nugget to leave you with today and then I really like yoga with Adrienne she has a free YouTube that you can um, watch her channel and she has some uh, meditations for anxiety and stress relief and what I like about her channel you know beyond that it's free is that she really starts with the beginner in mind and so you just have to be able to tune into her channel and she walks you through how to do yoga if you've never had any you know training any products and you just want to start it's a, just a great way to kind of be introduced to yoga and then um, an affirmation this is what an affirmation would look like I am surrounded by love all is well and so if you want to start with positive affirmations maybe that's the one that you want to start with this week you know all all is well I'm surrounded by love and so the last thing that I really want to leave you with before I, I look at the questions um, is just that going back to the motivation you know so many times we think that we can't do something because we're waiting on someone else um, so something really practical that I like to share is making your bed people talk about you should make your bed every morning because it's a it's a habit thing it's a discipline thing and I would always say well I can't make my bed in the morning because I get up before my husband and say my husband is in the bed so I should you know I should you know I can't do that that's not going to work for me and so what I decided is you know what I can make my side of the bed I don't have to make the whole bed it doesn't have to be perfect but I can make my side of the bed and so I started doing that um, maybe I don't have someone who regularly texts me encouraging text messages well I don't have to wait for someone to do that for me I can use this technology in this app and I can have that sent to me every day whenever I need it whenever I know that that would be helpful to me and so I just want to use those couple of examples to remind you that 
you don't have to wait for someone else. It doesn't have to be perfect. There are things, there are workarounds that you can do to take control and ownership of your world and your life and just be really encouraged and empowered to do that. And I would love for you um, to let me know if this is helpful. I hope that it was something that was really a productive hour of your time. I hope that you feel really encouraged and hopeful about what the next couple of weeks can look like for you and managing your stress. And um, I'm going to look at the questions really quickly before we end. Uh, will you get an email from those work at home webinars like we did for this one? I will ask Carolyn if she's going to send those out. I think that she has just gone ahead and loaded those on the actual website for y'all. So if you use the link that you use to sign up for this class, Go to that same link and you will see the classes listed in your wellness portal. So that's a workaround until I get an answer for that. And then, yes, we will be sharing the PowerPoint. Carolyn is going to work on the logistics of whether that's emailed to y'all or whether she posts that for you. Um, but you will definitely have the PowerPoint so that you can click on the links. And then you will get the slides. They may not come today, but they will. you will definitely get them by early next week for sure. And, okay, let me make sure there's nothing else. Just going to make sure that there are no other questions before we close. But, again, just so appreciative of y'all being here, and thank you. This was my first webinar uh, to host, and so thanks so much for the great feedback and for your patience. I appreciate it. And midnight sushi, that sounds really great. <laughs> I love some sushi. That would be a great great thing to put on the horizon. All right, wonderful. All right, well, I don't see any other questions. Thank you so much for your feedback and your comments. Again, if you need anything else, um, my email is abby.horton at ua.edu, and you can always look me up on the wellness page or on the nursing website for CCN. Um, but with all of that, I'll say y'all go and do something for yourselves today. Go have some fun. Go do some self-care. All right. I hope y'all have a great rest of your day and we'll see you soon. Bye.